Hello everybody and welcome to Watkins Glen International. It's round seven of the Eda Mid2 Mazda MX5 Cup presented by BF Goodridge. I'm John Hindoff, alongside me in the booth is Sheer Adam. This weekend we have a new yet familiar face behind the wheel. It's NBC sports analyst and IndyCar veteran James Hinchcliffe. He's making his Eda Mid2 Mazda MX5 Cup debut. Hinch has raced open wheel cars at Watkins Glen before, but never a sports car. You know, I think what's what's the, the real strength of this series is just that car, the, the way it's been built. Uh, it's such a great race car. It's forgiving in a way, but it also rewards good habits. So it's a great training tool for young drivers. It's uh, it's a great race car for, you know, maybe older drivers that want to get into motorsports. Um, for me, it's kind of the it's kind of the complete package. And so it's it's a great car. And then around it, they built a great championship. So I highly recommend it to anybody that's looking to get into the sport. Series leader Aaron Johnson celebrated his first career win at Laguna Seca and he'll be looking to widen the gap in the championship standings. It's the halfway point of the season. Drivers like Celine Roland and former champion Gresham Wagner, along with Jared Thomas, are hot on Johnson's tail. Races this season have been as close as ever, with the six races combining for a total of less than one second margin of victory. Let's get to the start of round number seven. Beautiful area of the world. What is it? Four and a half, five hours drive up from Manhattan and an 11 corner, 3.4 mile circuit that is etched into every driver and team's mind. Uh, not corner numbers here. We've got names. Uh, the inner loop, the outer loop, the heel and the toe of the boot, the chute. And it is an absolute challenge for everybody concerned. Goodly smattering of sports car enthusiasts on what is going to be a huge weekend here at Watkins Glen International. They've got three quarters of an hour at the first race of the Intermit 2 Mazda MX-5 Cup presented by BF Goodrich Tyres is go. Pretty clean break down towards the right-hander at turn one. Roland trying to come round the outside in the number 87, the multicoloured car. They're still two wide, three wide behind, right across the red and yellow curbs. They're still side by side. This is magnificent. Little golf clap from Sheer Adam as they're still <laughs> side by side coming over the top. This is magnificent stuff. And just easing ahead, Gresham Wagner being pushed by Jared Thomas, who then pops out. That's the... That's Thomas Annunziata. That's Thomas Annunziata who's come through uh, in two, third, fourth, fifth, maybe sixth place. But look at that round the outside into the in, inner loop for the first time. These cars will ride the curbs. They're pretty flat there. What a run for Celine Roland, who's just nipped ahead. But that was half of the three and a half miles near enough lap that we had two by two by two from the grid start. That Brilliant was, stuff. That was such a clean start. I am very impressed by our drivers for being able to maintain such composure and Celine Roland desperate to get to the front of the pack because 10 bonus points for leading the most lap. The guy who's chasing him in points is Gresham Wagner, who's now chasing him on the racetrack, so he'll want to keep that number five behind him. But Thomas Annunziata, hello, Mr. Rookie, started P5 up to P3 with an identical-looking car to Celine Roland because of a crash that happened in practice yesterday, resulting in him needing a new car for the weekend. How do we tell the two apart? A lot more pink on the roll cage for Celine Roland. He is also representing the Austin Hatcher Foundation, and he's got a bit of a new livery on the car this weekend, but the good news is Anunziata is repping it now, too. Absolutely incredible first lap. I mean, I am so impressed with the respect that was shown by all of the drivers. Absolutely remarkable stuff from them all. And I don't think Celine Roland got the best exit out of five. It looked like he dropped some of his left side tires just ever so slightly on the dirt. That opened the door for Gresham Wagner to be able to stick the nose down as we have it in contact further back in the field. Max Sapelski and Sam Paley are off in turn one. Both cars look like they'll be able to continue, though. That's terrible news for Sam Paley. Let's see if we can unpick what happened down at turn one. Uh, oh. Sam Paley was the innocent party there, I would say, Shay. I would agree with that. As I'm afraid he was rather railroaded off the circuit and 
ushered away. Still that battle further down the field. Jonathan Neudorf and Jeremy Fletcher battling for second best rookie honours as they come under the Global Broadcast Centre here. Hearing that it's a flat tyre for Hannah Zellers at the back of the field, the number 74 car. Oh, her nightmare weekend continues as Thomas Nunziata takes the advantage through turn one and goes to the lead of the race. Now, Celine Roland pushing him, but immediately behind them, it's Aaron Johnson and Jared Thomas. And all of a sudden, Gresham Wagner goes from first to fifth by the top of the S's. Well, if you think that that's unusual, this is exactly what happens in Eda Mitzen Master <laughs> MX5 Cup presented by BF Goodrich Tires. So Gresham Wagner is leading downhill braking area again lovely maneuver to the right hand side by Annunciata who goes through Wagner then has to just adjust his line a little bit and that pushes him further back down the queue everybody else goes thanks very much we'll squeeze through mm -hmm. side by side again nice big push from Jared Thomas to the blue car the number 24 that is Janson now they're on the inside for the first part of the inner loop, the bus stop. Johnson goes wide. He might be able to hold on to if he takes some curb. Oh. He does from a JTR, from a Spark, from a McCumbie McAleer racing car. Matthew Dirks with the fastest lap of the race last time around 209348 on the ragged edge. Gresham was two wheels off the track going down the run into the bus stop for a very long time. And now I think that that is Celine Roland who's gone very wide through the bus stop and has used up a lot of the grass instead of the racing line. It worked for him, though. He hasn't dropped back from the pack. So keep an eye on the Bridgestone tyres <laughs> on that car. Yeah, at least two. That's the fastest grass cutter I've seen. This is all inside the top ten, side by side. These masters. Uh, oh, and there's a big off. And that's... Gresham. Oh, my goodness, it's Gresham Wagner from third. Wow. He went off at the exit in nine, Turn nine. John. He's come through. Now, he was, oh, he's just, it's on his own. Oh, no. He's just, he's absolutely misjudged it. He was trying to get the good run on Jared Thomas, and he just drifted out wide. I, he, there is barely a car's width between the edge of the track. He was right under the back of Jared Thomas into the tyres. The good news is, that I can see Gresham out of the car and he's already, in fact, he's able on his own to take off his helmet and his balaclava. Deep breath, restart, just under 17 minutes to the checkered flag and the $6,000 for the winner, down to $1,000 for 10th place in this, the first of two races this weekend. Aaron Johnson, championship leader, down into the first corner with a teammate behind him, Jared Thomas who is maybe playing Tim Teal Colour at the moment. Oh, a oh, bit of hip and shoulder there coming through turn one. That was Palermo and Woody Hyman. They're already under review for another incident. They're, clearly, Woody has a Hernan magnet with him, and Hernan <laughs> has a Woody magnet uh, with him. As the leaders come over the top of the brow of turn four, head down the short chute towards the inner loop. And now we get two echelons of cars, two lines of cars. Here comes the Hickson <laughs> Motorsport machine. This is a replacement car for Thomas Annunziata. So he comes through. We've seen this show before, and Annunziata back to the lead at the exit of the bus stop. That's a rookie leading the whole race. Not just the top rookie, he leads it all. Annunziata from New Jersey. That happened last year in this race, though, John. We got a rookie getting his first ever win in the championship in race number two. Race number one was won by Tyler Gonzalez. And by the way, the other races we've had here at this track in the past, all of those winners not in the race today. We will have a new virtual name on the virtual trophy. Is it going to be Thomas Annunziata <laughs> as he comes back to the lead with a textbook Watkins Glen International manoeuvre? We've still got eight or ten cars right in this year with 12 <laughs> minutes to go. Typical in a bit to MX5. It is definitely the best way. I think on the last lap, whoever's leading has got to try and get across to the right-hand side coming out of Turn 4. Otherwise, they are just going to get freight trained and everybody follows through. Johnson goes to the lead. The two Hickson team cars trying to follow through. Jared Thomas holding off 
one of them, but had to give best to Thomas Anunziata. Here's his teammate round the outside. McIntosh on the inside in that bright orange and lime green car. Oh, big push, big push on the back of the 69 car. <laughs> McIntosh actually pushed to the lead, literally with a bump. Not just, oh, he's been hit again, he's going off. This is going to be huge. Oh, no. In the uphill. And this carnage. Roland is involved. Uh, Jonathan Newdorf is involved as well as the full course yellow does now wave. Alex Batura, Jeremy Fletcher. Uh, that's a big one for Newdorf, though. That was such He's a move happy. from McIntosh. The dive down into turn one. The yellow and green car gets a big push as he squeezes on the inside of Robert Neuegger. It was Newdorf actually. Uh, Newdorf, excuse push. me. Yeah, give them the push. And then up the hill, oh, he gets hit by Neuegger. He, uh, he gets hit by Neuegger. Matthew Dirks is going to be out of the race as well. And Jeremy Fletcher, we know, took some damage. Take a closer look. So the 13 black and white car on the quarter panel yep. on the right-hand side. And that's going to be a penalty, I think, Wow. For Robert Neuegger, who'd fought his way up through the field. Serious damage to Celine Roland's car as well in the left rear. But what avoidance by James Hinchcliffe. Very heads up. He kept the car tucked in on the racing line and managed to avoid all the carnage. So McIntosh did pull across the front of Neuegger. Then he gets in front of Celine Roland. That's all fine coming out of turn one. Into turn two, does he move across? He takes the Maybe line. Maybe he does, but that's the racing line. Good point, Shay. So a slightly anticlimactic end to this race as time will expire. And finishing under yellow after a multi-car incident out of one into two. Aaron Johnson and JTR Motorsports Engineering will take the top step of the podium. Thomas Anunziata in second, the man from New Jersey, and Hickson Motorsport will be on the second step of the box. And Jared Thomas, the JT of JTR Motorsports Engineering, in third position. So the race finishing behind the safety car and under yellow after that big wreck. But let's get down to victory lane and hear from our round seven winner, championship leader, Aaron Johnson. Man, that was a very interesting race. Obviously, there was a lot going on. Um, you know, I had, we had a great thing going with myself and Jared Thomas for a while, and uh, you know, Nuziata was strong all race, and he put himself in the mix. Um, at the end there, you just really have to put your car in the right place at the right time, and uh, I just happened to, to get the lead, and, you know, before the last caution came out, so it happened to work in our favor. But you know, I definitely feel confident in, in what we're bringing to the table, at, you know, every event, and uh, I'm ready to keep chasing this championship. Congratulations to Aaron and the entire JTR Motorsports Engineering team. As we leave Watkins Glen, here are the points. Aaron Johnson stays at the top of the championship and now leads by 190 points. Celine Roland, after a cracking weekend, is up to second. Jared Thomas in third. Rookie Thomas Anunziata in fourth. Sam Paley rounds out our top five. Rounds nine and ten of the Edamitsu Mazda MX-5 Cup, presented by BF Goodrich, will be at Road America on August the 4th and 5th. We'll see you then. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of the International Motorsports Association. We would like to thank all of our loyal fans for your continued support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.